here we go. Hi, hi, Louis. Thank you so much, Brad. Okay. I hope I can go smoothly right. and Alan. easy and you should feel good to be happy, healthy. Oh, now, oh, hi, wait, 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 please. Hi, hi, good evening, okay. sir. Good late. evening. Okay. So good evening, everyone. Begin over here. Don't lose the energy. We're going to begin over here. Um, uh, by the bottom of Samach Vav Omut Sheni, uh, by the Mishnah. So the Mishnah begins. Uh, let me get my uh, regular draw. Okay, so we're discussing over here about the service of the of the Azazel, of sending to Azazel. Just to recap, what we learned so far is this picture over here. Uh, first, the Kain Gadol would go do the vidui on the on this goat. And, and basically, there's no real service done on this goat, and yet this goat contains all the Averis of Klai Yisrael. It goes right on, on this goat's head, as he says the video on behalf of Klai Yisrael. Then he sends the goat with this guy over here, who's supposed to bring it into, into the Midbar. Let's read the Pasuk. The Pasuk says, This says the confession. As call aboynas bnei Yisrael, as call pesheim, all their negligence and all their uh, sins, the call katoisim, anything they did by mistake, the nosan oisim, he puts all the averes al roishasir on top of the goat, the shilach biad ish iti sets it free, biad ish iti iti means a designated man, and they go out hamidbara to this desert. Remember, the word midbara means that he has to go to a place where there's no uh, nobody nobody living there. And as he's going there, he carries all their Averis, El Eretz Gezeira. Now, what does this mean to a land of Gezeira? What the Gemara is going to tell us that Gezeira means it's a land that cuts away at the animal. When you throw it off the cliff, it cuts away at the animal and, and tears it apart. He should let the, the goat go free in the desert. Doesn't really say you throw it off the mountain, but this is what Chazal interpreted it. But then the Pasuk adds one more point, and a very important point. We're always familiar that if you touch something, you become Tame. Why not? I mean, you can touch a Sheretz. Here, all he's doing is walking the animal. That's it. He's walking the animal, and I want to tell you, he's walking about uh, nine miles on, on Yom Kippur with this animal. And the Torah says the guy that's walking the, the goat to the Azazel. He has to go to the mikvah. Not only he goes to the mikvah, he has to wash his clothing because he's a rishon l'tama, and uh, and his clothing became tame as well. And then he could come back to the camp. So let's read the Mishnah. The Mishnah says in the bottom of the page here, Miakire Yerushalayim Hoyumalavin Oise Atzuka Rishoyna. They were ten. They the the Choshuva people of Yerushalayim would escort the 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 each et till the first hut, till the first hut. In other words. There were 10 huts from Jerusalem told the Tzuk is the place where they, the Azazel, the hard mountain where they threw the animal off. And that is approximately nine miles, which is 12 Tchumen, okay? 12 Tchumen. And therefore there were 10 huts. And basically there was always somebody walking with this guy. He wasn't walking alone. He's actually walking with people and people have the problem. A normal person can't walk outside the Tchum. So they would walk him from one sukkah to the next hut. And that person that escorted him could not walk anymore. But the, the ish iti, he could walk because he don't, the Hilcha Shabbos doesn't apply to him. He's allowed to be go out of the Tchum on Shabbos. So, but they wanted somebody to accompany him. So they, they had 10 different huts set up. And from one hut to another hut, somebody would escort him. Top of the page. Tishim ris is 90 ris. Shiva mechzel mil. That's seven and a half ris. To every mile, and Rashi makes the cheshbon that, uh, that for ninety ris you have twelve miles, seven and a half to uh, uh, seven and a half into ninety, you get twelve mil, and those are the eleven miles away. Now I want to tell you something, a very important point, that when he reached the end of the last hut, the ten huts, there was another two mil to walk, and there he walked alone. According to our Mishnah, he walked alone till the mountain. And then nobody saw him or the guy, the last guy in the hut, the last hut tried to look out to see that the, the mission was accomplished. Now, the mission continues. I'll call Sukkah Vesukah in every hut that he passed, I'm relay what they would tell him. Now they knew this person is fasting and he has to walk nine miles in the heat. 
We have food, we have water here. Now, he's not allowed to eat on Yom Kippur like everybody else. So why do they tell him they have food and water? So as we're going to learn in the Gemara is that a hungry person, if you tell him that he has food and he, if he wants, he can take food and water, he becomes less hungry. It's only when you take it away from him and you say, yeah, there's no food, no water, he's going to try, all of a sudden he becomes very sick and he needs to break his fast. By giving him pas pasali, the Gemara says, uh, bread in his basket, he's able to uh, uh, make it through the trip and, and, and get to the mountain without breaking his fast. They would escort him from one hut to the other hut. Like we said before, the per, by the last hut, they stop because they can't go outside the Tchum because there's two miles, two mil left to, every mil, by the way, is 2,000 ama. So there was two mil left to get to the mountain. And the people in the hut cannot walk with him to the mountain because that would be out of their Tchum. The people in the last hut would stand from a distance. And they would watch him throw off the do the do the action. Says the Mishnah What did he do on top of the mountain? So the Mishnah says, If you remember, there was a tongue of wool on top of its horns. So he would tear it apart. Half was on the on the rock, and half was was in the this red crimson wool, uh big thick piece of wool. Half was tied on a rock. And half was tied between its horns. So let's take a look at the picture. The picture shows us over here, you can't really see it, but it's a, a little piece of wool is tied on the horn of the animal, and a little piece of wool is tied around the uh, around the stone over here. And basically, and he pushed the animal backwards. It would roll and go down. And it would not even reach half the mountain until it was ripped apart limb by limb. Now, I want to tell you something. This is a big nace because a goat, a mountain goat, if you throw it off a mountain, it could survive. I mean, they're meant to survive uh, these, these type of jumps or uh, falls. And very often we'll find that the Gemara in Yushalmi would say that the, the actually the, the goat escaped and, and uh, survived the fall. But so it's a nace that most of the time, it was ripped apart and uh, by limb by limb. Then the, what happens to the Ishiti? He would go back to the to the to the last sukkah and wait there till it's dark. Now he could technically the mitzvah is over. He should stay there on the mountain, but we don't want him to stay alone. So we gave him uh, permission to go back to the last hut. Says the Mishnah. When does he even tama begadim? We learned in the pasuk, as we said, stated that by just walking the animal, you you become tame begadim. Says the Gemara, says the Mishnah, Mishiyatsa chutz l'chaim es Yerushalayim. As soon as he left the wall of Yerushalayim, already he's a tame man. Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Shimon says, Mishas dechiyasay letzuk. The moment he pushes the animal off the mountain, that's when his clothing become tame. Up until that, he's a Torah person. We'll see more about that in the Gemara. We learned the rabbis taught. Like we, there were 10 huts and the distance from Jerusalem to Azazel was 10 milim. Again, 10 milim, each mil is 2,000 ama. And I'm guessing that 2,000 ama is 4,000 feet. If you guess that way, then, then each 4,000 feet is three quarters of a mile, basically. So it's basically this distance of nine miles. He's walking from the out, outer, outside the city of Jerusalem to get to the mountain. Divri Rabbi Meir, these are the words Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Huda disagreed. Rabbi Huda said, Tesha Sukkos, there were nine Sukkos, Ba'asara Milim, and there was 10 miles. It was 10 Milim. So he says the distance was shorter. And because of that, they had less huts. They only had nine huts. Now, important point, according to Rabbi Huda, according to the Cheshbon, they actually walked him to the mountain. Since if you have nine huts, the last hut only had a mile to the mountain. And therefore, the people that were in the last hut actually walked him to the mountain. They didn't walk alone. Rabbi Yaisi, I mean, Rabbi Yaisi says, he agrees that there was 10 miles, but he says, there were only five huts, Basora and there were 10 mils, and they made it through an Arab. In other words, that 
that they allowed the each hut was a man was in a hut. Let's say a few people, a person was in a hut. He's the escorter of the Ishiti. But we allow him to go 4,000 Amis. Why? Because he actually would put an Erev, 2,000, uh, like a mill away, 2,000 Amis away from his hut. And that would allow him on Yom Kippur to walk an extra 2,000 Amis. So because he could walk an extra 2,000 Amis, you have less huts. Instead of having a t- a 10 huts or nine huts, you could only have five. The Kulanari, the Erev, by making the Erev Tchumen, we could have less huts. So Om Rabbi Yaisi, Rabbi Yaisi says, if you're going with this cheshben that you can make Erev Tchumim, Sochli Elazar Bani. My Elazar, my son, had a, like a, a, a good chap. In other words, a good, a, a, a good insight over here. Im al Yedei Erev, if you're already using the Erev, you could solve the whole pr- riddle over here. Yechoy L'Lasas Afil Shtei Sukkas Basar Mil. You can make just two huts and 10 mil. Wow, two huts and 10 mil? How's that possible? Yes, because the, the people of Jerusalem would walk them out of Jerusalem. They would put a, a, a roof at 2,000 amas, 2000 amas, and they allowed the people to escort the, the, the Ishiti 4,000 amas outside Jerusalem. Then they would put a, a hut, a hut, 2,000 amas away from that because a hut, the people from the hut some of the people would have their Erev in one direction to pick up the Ish E.T. and walk him to the hut. And then another person in that hut would have the, uh, an Erev, which allowed him to walk another 4,000 because he would put an Erev in the opposite direction. So Rashi makes the Cheshven, uh, uh, how you can have two huts and walk 10 miles. So that was the Machlekes. Kaman Ozla Hodetanya. Who does the Spricer go like? Chutz Ma'achron Shebehem that the Brysa says, like our Mishnah says, that the person in the last hut stopped and did not escort him anymore, would never reach him to the mountain. He would stand at a distance and watch what he did. So who is that a Brysa going like? And basically, who's the author of our Mishnah? Come on, Meir. It's only according to Meir where the distance from Jerusalem to the mountain was 12 miles, that's why the people in the final hut did not walk him all the way to the mountain. He ended up walking alone. The Mishnah said, I'll call sukkah the sukkah in every hut. We have food and water. Why don't you take something? Tana, we learned in Hebraisa, the person never needed it. Uh, he never broke his fast. But So why did they tell him we have food and water? We have a, ice, uh, a cooler over here. It can, you cannot compare a hungry person that meets the a hungry person that has bread in his basket to a hungry person that does not have, that doesn't have bread in his basket. By telling him at every hut we have food and water, that gave him strength not to need it. I guess the Yetzirah is there when, when you don't have it, you know, but if you have it, you feel more relaxed. This is a phenomenal thing. That it was so, it was so clear to the the the, the point of this of this lushan of the Zahiris. as the, as the goat went down the mountain, the 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 red crimson turned white. So that was a big big thing, a big nace. So the Gemara asks if that's the whole point. You just want to see it white turn white. Viniktere kule basela. So tie the whole thing around the rock. Why do you have to put some of the wool on the horn? Why do you have to put any of the wool on the horn of the animal? Tie the whole thing on the on the rock and then throw them down the mountain. Because the whole point of having the wool is to see if it turned white. So the Gemara says, cave in the mitzvah of Sart, there's a mitzvah to throw the goat down the mountain. The problem is, Dilma Kodem Umalbim. Maybe already by even starting the mitzvah, the, the wool would have turned white. And the, the Ish Iti will be so relaxed. Oh, they, the Jews got a kapara, and therefore he will forget to throw the goat down the mountain. Unbelievable. So we're afraid that the nace would happen a lot earlier and it'll turn white, and then uh, and then he'll forget to throw the goat down the mountain. So the Gemara says, Vidiktere Kule Ben Karnav, then put the whole entire wool between its horns. So that you can't do. Zinden the Gomish Lele Reshiv Alav Adaite. Maybe 
the, the goat will fall in such a manner that his head is going to be pressed into its body and, and curved into its body, and you'll not be able to see if the wool turned white or not. So therefore, you need a piece of wool to be on the stone, uh, just in case you can't see the wool, the piece of wool that's on the horn. But you don't want to put it all on the stone because then you'll forget if it turned white, you're going to forget to throw the goat down the mountain. It's like this, you're busy with the goat and, and you have a piece of wool by the rock, like we saw in the picture, you have a piece of wool by the rock, a piece of wool by the goat. And therefore the, the Ishiti could observe if it turned white or not. Tanurabana. Now, here, here is a, a fascinating thing. Tanurabanan, the rabbis taught. Borishaina, in the very beginning, they didn't even send the wool with the animal. They would, they would uh, put the wool in the Pesach Ulam, in the base of Migdash, the antechamber of the, of the Heichal, of the sanctuary, you know, by the T, the, by the part of the white part of the sanctuary, the T part, the top of it, um, and hang the wool there on the outside. Hilbin, and everybody could see it. Everybody who was in the Azara would be able to observe. Hilbin, if it turned white, how you Everybody was happy. Loy Hilbin, but if it didn't turn white, how you at saving umis People would be sad and be embarrassed because their chuva was not accepted. And therefore, it disturbed the whole Yom Kippur because the people would give up from doing chuva on Yom Kippur because they're waiting for something to happen and it didn't happen. And then they would get sad and they would be embarrassed and the whole Yom Kippur would be ruined. So Eskidu, they made a new rule. They would put it inside the sanctuary where nobody could see it. But but they were still there were some people who peeked in and saw. Let's say a koyin or somebody who would try to peek into the building, and they would still see it. Hilbin, if it turned white, and everybody was happy. Loy Hilbin, if it didn't turn white, and they would be sad. And again, that would ruin the Yom Kippur if people had a reason to give up doing tshuva. So therefore, Hiskinum, they made the rule rule, she kaishinoy se chetsi basel of a chetsi ben karno. They would tie it on the uh, they would send it with the goat out to the mountain. Nobody saw it. So nobody knew. Probably they, they didn't know about what the if it turned white or not till after Yom Kippur, until the news came back. Now, at least during Yom Kippur, people were more focused on uh, on doing the chuva and not focused on the string. In fact, the Yushalmi says that everybody, originally, everybody used to have red strings in their houses to see if it turned white on Yom Kippur. And then they abolished that because, because obviously for the same reason. Omer Rab Nachum Bar Papa Bishim Rab Kapor. Rab Nachum Bar Papa said in the name of Rab Loza Kapor that there was a different reason for the string. The reason for the string was so that the Kohen Godel could continue his avoida. That means he would not continue on the service until it turned white. So therefore, they would tie it from the inside. So the coin Gadol would be basically, or the Kahana will see if it's turned white. The cave and the, the fact was, in a good time, the cave in Shagia Sa'ila Midbar, when the goat would reach the desert, it would turn white. The Yadu, and everybody would know, Shanasa Mitzvah the Mitzvah was done. And then they continued on with the service. So he heard that the reason why they had it is so that that gave the license. That was like instead of a cell phone, that was the license that the Kohen Gadol could continue on the service. He would take a break until it turned white. That's what Rabbi Leza Kapara's opinion was. That's what the whole purpose of it. Shinema, the Pasuk says, if, you, if your sins will be as crimson red, they will be uh, like snow, they will turn white. Says the Mishnah, they would not reach the half of the mountain and it turned into the, the, the animal turned into limbs, was ripped apart by the limbs as they threw it off the mountains. So they asked the question in the yeshiva. Very good question. What happens if uh, those limbs of that so'ir hamishtaleach is it oser bahano? In other words, let's say another animal finds it. Let's say your animal finds a limb of that, sorry, is he allowed to eat it? Is it Asr Bahano? Or you can tell your animal, you can eat it, have it, have lunch. So, Rav Shmuel, it's Machoikas Rav Shmuel, Chad Omer it's permitted to benefit from the Sa'i Mishtaleach after it's killed. The Chad Omer Asurim, and one said it's Asr. Man, the Omer Mutar, the one that said it's Mutar, we go on Omer Beis, the Ksiv, by Midbar. 
The Torah says, send it out to the Midbar. So we darshan, the, the goat is like a desert, just like a desert is free for everyone. The goat, after it's ripped apart and dies, it's free. You're permitted to have an awe from it. Man the one that says it's also the gezerah. The Torah calls it gezerah means that it's something that gezera, as we know what it means, gezerah means strict or, or, or a rule or a prohibition. That's what, uh, so it's prohibited. The word, the Torah calls it a gezera, so it teaches you that the animal is prohibited. Man the and the one that says that it's also high midbar mind of it. Like, what does he do with the extra words midbar that teaches you that, uh, that it's like a desert? The boy, look at the time we needed to teach you, like what this Brysa teaches you. The Torah three times says the word midbara. Hamidbara, Hamidbara, Ban Midbar. The rabbis it, it, it includes Noiv, Begivoin, Shiloi, Ubeisolam. During all these times, Noiv, Begivoin, different times where they built the Mishkan in different places, and of course the Beis Amigdash, that this din of Sayyim Ashtoleach also applies. It wasn't a one-time thing done in the Midbar in the Eretz in the one time. It was done throughout the times of the Mishkan, times of, even during times when people had their own bonus, bonus, and then during, during Mishkan Shiloh and Beis Olam. Bernard, was, yeah. did we, was, it, was it concluded when we talked about the Sayyim Ashtoleach, so that Azel, was it Consider like a shvita, and then we left it a question: What if that was the case? It could be eaten. Was that concluded? Was that resolved? Right. right. Well, well, yes. According to the opinion, right, that it was a shvita, and you learn like the opinion very good that it's not aser bahana, right? That it's like that it's then then yes, it, according it possibly could be eaten because right. the throwing it down the mountain was like a malika done on a, on a bird, was like a malika done on a bird. That's not a right. shvita. They're sticking a nail in. Very right. good. But what we, we're seeing th that there is an opinion that says it was Asr Bahana. Mm -hmm. But the Idach, the one that says it's permitted Bahana, Hach Gezeira my Ovidli. What does he do with the word Gezeira? Right. So the, he teaches you, Gezeira doesn't mean it's prohibited. Gezeira means uh, there are, it, it's ripped apart. My boy, Leila Kitadanya. Gezeira mean the word Gezeira ain't Gezeira El It has to be in a mountain that, uh, that it, that, that is very sh that that basically is Rashi is very like a cliff. El Khatucha means it's like a, a steep cliff. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. Not not sloped. Dover Acha Ela Dover Hamiskazer Biyorit. That the goat gets chopped up limb by limb as it go goes down. So <laughs> they either either Okay, either Gezeira means that it doesn't have to be, it could be a smooth mountain, but a steep cliff. But according to the Dova Acha, it has to be something that has sharp stones on it so that it, as it rolls, it gets torn apart. Mm -hmm. And then Dova Acha is, I love this Dova Acha. Gezeira, why does the Torah call the Mishtaleach Gezeira? Gezeira means you can never understand it. Shema, time of my You're going to say that this is nonsense. You're throwing a goat off the mountain and everybody's forgiven. You know, that's pretty, pretty, that sounds nonsensical. Talmud loyma ani Hashem. God says, I'm the Abishta, ani Hashem gzartiv. I made this law. You cannot uh, think about it and uh, uh, try to figure out how it works. Amar Rabbah, Rabbah gave the halacha. The halacha is that it should be permitted. That the, it's not Asr Bahana. Mistabra commanded Amar Mutaram that it's permitted. Because the Torah is not going to tell you, throw it down a mountain, then walk away, and somebody's going to find it, and, and they'll be over eating Isra Hanor. It's more logical that the Torah did not put a restriction on it that it should be Asra Bahanor. Torah Rabbanon, Azazel, the mountain was called Azazel, Az Vikasha. It should be strong and hard. Yoho, I would have thought, by Yishu, the mountain could be anywhere where there's uh, people are living there. You know, it could be in Den you know any any mountain that has a, a yeshuv there. Talmud loyma be midbar. It's a mountain in like in a desert where nobody lives. The 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 ish iti has to be alone. Menayim shebetzuk. How do you know it has to be a sharp mountain? Talmud loyma gezera. The word gezera teaches you it should be a sharp mountain. Tanya idach azazel. Even the word azazel means kosher shemaharam. The 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 hardest of the mountain. It talks, the word Ele means the strongest of the people were taken into exile. Ele, like Elikim, the word Ele means 
strong. Az kale, that's what it's like a double, double strong. Part of the Bay Rabbi Yishmoel, Azazel. What does Azazel mean? Unbelievable. Shemechaper al maise uzeb Azazel. What is that? That there were two angels that lived on planet Earth. The Chumash describes that the, the, the angels came down to planet Earth because they, they couldn't believe that humans were messing up. And so Hashem said, if you were sent to planet Earth, you would also be succumbed, succumbed to temptation. And so Uzav Azazel came down and the Chumash described that they, uh, they did Gili Arayas like the rest of them. And from them, the giants came out. Uh, uh, the giants that we know that were in Chumash, that came mm-hmm. from these angels. So they were the angels were known as Azazel. So the whole Sariah Mishtoleach is Mechapeh for Arias. That's that's what the Sariah Mishtoleach. I guess that was the most common Avera. So that's why um, that's why that's why it was called Azazel. Not, mm-hmm. I'm sure it's Mechapeh and everything, right? Mm-hmm. Rabbi Rabbi is taught as Mishpataitasi. The, the, the Chumash talks about, again, all these things, do my, uh, my, my dinam, okay, my laws. Even the laws that you can, you can derive it from common sense, do it as if it was, as you know, that I'm the one that commanded it. So to speak, like uh, cursing Hashem, it says blessing Hashem. But basically, these are, are laws that, with common sense, these are civil laws, of course. Can't kill, can't steal, all those things do it because of the commandment of Hashem. And then the Chumash says, my statutes, Tishmeru, you safeguard. What does that mean? There are things, laws in the Chumash, that the Sutton tries to question, have you question What's the purpose of these mitzvahs? The Elohim, Achilas Chazir, eating Chazir, Levisha Shatnas, putting on Shatnas, the Chalitzas Yavama, the whole process of how Yavama releases, uh, releases herself from the Yavam, the Taharas Mitzora, and how a Mitzora becomes purified, the Soir Amishdaleach, and the Soir that gets sent. These are examples of Chukim in the Torah that really, with your own Seichel, you wouldn't be able to figure it out what the reason of this is. Now, uh, obviously, what's glaring in this Gemara is what's missing from the from the choices over here. As Chukim. Paraduma. There you go. That's our Parsha. So I don't know what the answer is. I'm just uh, thinking about it. That Paraduma, and this is the week's Parsha, and, and here it's using Chazir. Mm-hmm. Maybe, um, yeah, maybe the answer is those are for the Hamonah. The Hamonah oh. is, is not Paraduma. It's oh. every day in, day out. It's Chazir. Oh, the shotness, Yabama is a possibility, but sorry, everybody, it's sorry, Mr. Leah. Very good. Uh, sorry, Mr. Leah might be the one that. No, so Mr. Leah was for everybody. Was the, right. Sorry, that right. was Machapar. But, well, wait, wait, maybe I can argue. What's the difference to Sarm Shalayach and the uh, Paraduma? That was it happened every time. year. Paraduma is eight times in uh, right. there's seven, eight Paraduma in history, right? But the poster boy of Kukaisai. Is uh, is Paraduma? So yes, 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 yes. Okay. If you, if you see a tarot, let me know. Gotcha, Such a glaring question. Yeah. Toyma, you're going to say again. My Toyahem. This is nonsense. Talmud Loyma. Ani Hashem. Ani Hashem Chakakiv. I I I I engraved it. Vein lechol reshus lahara behem. You have no permission to start figuring things out. Then we learned Amos Ime Tama Begadim. When do you become Tami Bit Begadim? Tana Rabbanu. The rabbis taught. The people escorting the, the goat, the, the ish iti, the ish, the, the people, the people who are escorting the ish iti are not metame, metame begodim. The, the, it's just the person walking the goat. And that's the big Kiddush over here. He's not touching anything. If the goat is healthy, he's just walking with the goat side by side. And yet the Chumash says he becomes tame. But the person escorting him obviously don't, does not become Tommy. Now the Gemara asks, I would have thought that when he leaves the wall of the Azara, that's when the Ishiti becomes Tommy. Tamad Hameshaleach, he's escorted. He's escorted. That means he had to he had to leave the, the city, not the just the base of Migdash. 
e hamashaleach. If you have the word hamashaleach, just the word hamashaleach without the vav, yochal achi I might think that that when does he first become tame? Only when he reaches the mountain, because all this time from the time that he left Jerusalem until he re- got to Tzuk, to the mountain, he was be- always being escorted, and then he's that the begotten become tame. The Vav says that he was at one time he was an escorted person. So we take it after the first moment he was escorted. As soon as he leaves the walls of Jerusalem and he was escorted like one step, he's already was escorted. And therefore he become he can be metame from that then that that point and on, anything he touches becomes tame. David Rabbi Yehuda. But Rabbi Yishu, Yaisi Yaima, Azazel the Kibis, Achegia la Tsuk, until he reaches the Tsuk, until he reaches the Tsuk, that's when he, um, uh, until, uh, until he reaches the mountain, that's when it says he should wash his clothing. So he doesn't, he doesn't uh, become tummy until he reaches the mountain. But Rabbi Shimon is the, what we saw in the Mishnah. When he lets the goat free, I mean, basically he throws it off the mountain. Zorka bevas. As soon as he lets it go with the head off the mountain, that's when his begot to become Tame. Let's just do quickly the Mishnah and then we'll stop over here. He would walk to the par of the that were that were going to be burnt, not burnt yet. And uh, these are the par of the that his own cow, cow and, and the coin goggle, the goat that he, he sprinkled the blood in the Kodesh Kadashim. And elsewhere, Koran, he ripped them apart, and he took the fats out of it, the ones that are brought onto his bear. He put it in a klishares, and put it onto the bear. Then what did he do with the two whole animals? He put them like this. Uh, I don't know if you can see this clearly, but this picture where he would wrap them in, they should be hugging each other. The goat and the cow are hugging each other on a stretcher, and and then and then he would take him out to a special place uh, to be burnt. And the Chumash also says the person that carries out the animal to be burnt also becomes Tommy and the Thomas Begadim. The Emer says Tommy Begadim. When does he Tommy Begadim? Mishyatsu chutz lechaymes Azara when he leaves the wall of the Azara. Rab Shimon Oimer. Rab Shimon says Mishyatsu ha'ur berubim. When the fire singes most of the animal, that's when the, these people become tame. So we'll stop over here. That's the Hashem. And we continue on on Sunday. I just encourage everybody to get it, if you got a chance to go to the All Parsha app, the Chumash and Rashi. Uh, mm-hmm. if, you, if, you, if you want to go through the Sedra nicely, uh, mm-hmm. it's a very good, uh, it's a very good shiurim on Chumash mm-hmm. and Rashi. The yep. Parsha app from the OU. Okay. Yep. Very good. Thanks yeah. tomorrow this week. Good Shabbos. Good Shabbos. Good Shabbos. Good Shabbos. Good Shabbos. Good Shabbos. Good Shabbos.